Okay, guys, what do we have here? Not that uh, little rat-looking thing on the right, but to your left, that toolbox. It says cobalt. wonder what's in that. First thing you'll notice how that box is designed like an X here and here. And you'll see it says XTR, 24 volt max. Okay guys, this is the new Cobalt XTR 24 volt max brushless 7 and a quarter inch circular saw. And this is Cobalt's model number KXCS 124B-03. The cost of this saw was $149. Uh, you do not get a charger or a battery. Let's open it up, see what she looks like. In the lid, you do get an edge guide. Now that's not something that I use on any saw, really, but uh, for those that do use it. And it stores nicely in here. Uh, it's got a nice snug fit. It won't fall out easily. While we're at the case here, the hinge is like this on both sides. They have some type of a plastic material, whatever this case is made out of. Looks like it's the same material. It's not a steel pin. Here you see how that saw nests really nice inside here in the blow molded case. Done a nice job of that. And it sits back at an angle. Now, as I said, it doesn't come with a battery, but up front, you can take a 4 amp hour. I don't have a bigger battery. It will set in there like that, and you can close the lid. Here is they have a um, thing that you can attach for a uh, sawdust collector. So this is the uh, chute that you put on for the dust collection. It fits on just like that. This Allen bolt, it does require a six millimeter Allen wrench. There it did have a threaded insert in there, as you could tell. It was a metal threaded insert. Now here's your holes attachment for your small inch and a quarter. Uh, fitting on your shop vac it fits right in there now this one's just a hair loose I mean it's not it doesn't fit snug you might put a little piece of tape on there duct tape or something like that while you're using it their masking tape but it does fit in there real nice all right let's look at the height adjustment got this lever here flip it up 
Now you can adjust the height of your cut. Push it down, it locks it. Okay, this is the locking knob to tighten down on your edge guide if you're using it. If you notice, you'll see that spring in there so that if you're not using it, it leaves tension on there so it doesn't vibrate and loosen and you could lose it. And so right in there is where your edge guide would slide into. Nice. Now your angle adjustment is provided here with this lever. Pull up on it and it allows your angle to be changed. For angle cutting. Now this is interesting here. So if right here it's set at 56 which is your maximum angle cut. But if you wanted to do repeat, repetitive 45s, say you're doing 90s and 45s, you, and you don't want to fool around with having to use the, because uh, it does have an angle gauge here and a indicator, which the indicator is adjustable, so once you zero it out, you can get repeated uh, results. But what you can do is, on this knob here, you push it and turn it. So now it's at 45. So now if I loosen up this knob, the angle knob, this will tilt just to 45. Okay, and likewise, if we do 22 and a half degrees, loosen it up, you're right at 22 and a half degrees. Really a nice feature, especially for 45s. But I, I like that. Uh, you can change that nice and quick and go from uh, your uh, regular 90 degree cuts to 45. For blade changing, they give you a Allen wrench that stores right in the handle like that, which is nice. You just can pull it right out and you have it to change your blade. Now, to change your blade, it's got an arbor lock right here. You just push down on this, rotate it until it goes in. Once it pushes in, all the way. See here, it's not all the way in. Now it goes all the way. So now, once that's pushed in, you don't need to have a piece of wood or anything. Like I've always done in the old days, put a piece of wood up in here to loosen it up. And then you just use your Allen, Allen wrench there to uh, break it free. As far as the build of it, it's got aluminum, the housing, the, the guard, the blade guard and the housing at the top. Everything is all aluminum. The base is aluminum. It's got um, whatever polymer or whatever they're using here for the case, like in all their tools. And it's got a very nice rubber up front here got rubberized surfaces very nice and I'm gonna put a battery in there but with the battery in there and even without it it's got a very uh, well balanced feel to it really nice now this hook up here really cool built into the top of the handle and you'll see it's got uh, indents in it where it stops. So I've got this 2x4 um, on an angle to represent a rafter. So if you're up on a roof putting rafters in or uh, working on uh, sheathing, decking, or if, even if this was horizontal as a floor joist, you see that hook allows you to keep the tool from going anywhere just by the friction created by those two. Really, really neat idea. Now I put a 2x4 vertical to represent a stud and by gosh it'll stay there too just like that.
Now the saw does come stock with a cobalt framing ripping blade 24 tooth. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put my 4 amp hour battery in, freshly charged. Now, we'll take a look at the switch, which right here, it's got this safety and it's comfortable in either right or left, whether I'm using it my right or left hand. You just simply push in. So if I'm using my other hand, it works either way. It doesn't matter. And it does have an electric brake, which is really nice. It's surprising how quiet this saw actually is. And it's got a light illuminate your line. This is a very nice feature. An electric brake. Now I thought it might be interesting to see how this, uh, this is an old Rockwell number 315, seven and a quarter inch saw. I beat the hell out of this thing and it just works and works and works. I've put carborundum blades in here and cut out concrete walls um, to put in uh, doors and um, but I just use the hell out of it and it works great but uh, let's just see I don't have a blade in it at the moment but we're just gonna see as far as loudness and then the uh, spin time of the arbor here In the old days, they did uh, run a little bit longer. They, they uh, didn't have any type of a break on it. And here is a newer version of that the Model 315 saw Rockwell. Let's look at it. Took a hell of a long time to stop. Isn't that amazing? Loud too, very loud. But it's a very good saw. I've used the hell out of this thing too. Quite the difference in the uh, sound level and most importantly that blade that stops so quick.